everybody. This is Laura with the Cranberry Public Library here with another edition of Saturday Storytime. We're getting into the Halloween season. If you guys didn't know, I'm sure you did. Getting your costumes ready, getting excited. It's only a couple of weeks away. Today we have a spooky offering. Bone soup. Hope you're hungry. Known across the land for his infamous appetite, Finnegan is never seen without his eating stool, his eating spoon, and his gigantic eating mouth. When Finnegan finds himself in a new town on Halloween, he hopes to join a great feast with the creatures who live there, but not a body or soul will share any of their food with the ever famished Finnegan. So what's a hungry skeleton to do? Armed with only his wits, and a special ingredient, will Finnegan be able to stir up a cauldron's worth of Halloween magic? Let's find out. Bone Soup by Cambria Evans. Here we go. Being nothing more than skin and bone, Finnegan had to live by his wits. He had no family or house to haunt, but he was known across the land for having a ravenous appetite. Everyone knew that wherever Finnegan went, he always brought his eating stool, his eating spoon, and his gigantic eating mouth, which is smiling right now. One Halloween, Finnegan's travels took him through a barren land. What a lovely place, he thought. I'm sure I can find a Halloween feast here. But as Finnegan grew closer to town, a witch passed by. Happy Hallows Night, he said. Do you know where the feast is? The witch took one look at Finnegan and quickly flew away. Back in town, the witch told the beast. The beast told the zombies. The zombies told the mummy. And before you knew it, the entire town was talking about the impending arrival of Finnegan the Eater. Here comes Finnegan. We don't need a big mouth like that. We barely have enough for ourselves. I have heard he's worse than a plague of locusts. Who's Finnegan? In a panic, the witch booby-trapped booby her jars of eyeballs. The beast locked his bat wings in a cupboard. The zombies put their frog's legs in the cellar. And the mummy and other town's creatures hid all that they had to eat. When poor, ever-hungry Finnegan came to town, he was surprised that it looked empty, but even more surprised that there was no feast. So, Finnegan knocked on the witch's door first. Could you spare a bit of food, he called out. I have nothing for you, the witch shrieked. Next, Finnegan tried the beast's door. Could you spare some wormy cheese and bread for a simple traveler, he asked. A simple traveler, the beast said. I know who you are. I have just enough for myself and none to spare. Be gone. At the third door, Finnegan had barely opened his mouth when the zombies all yelled, Go away! We have no food for you. At the mummy's door, the answer was the same. And so he went through the whole town, knocking on doors and windows, but not a body or soul had any food for Finnegan. Hello? Anyone home? Could, could you spare? Uh... Hmm. 
Undaunted, Finnegan collected wood from the forest and built a fire in the middle of town square. He filled the town's largest cauldron with water and set it to boil. After waiting a time, Finnegan ceremoniously opened his cloak. He took out a magnificent piece of bone, so old the edges were dry and splintered, and with a toothy grin, he dropped it right into the cauldron. Finnegan stirred the mixture, singing, Bone soup is what I make, a magic bone is all it takes. Boil it long and add some spice. Bone soup tastes so very nice. One by one, the town's creatures opened their doors and walked toward Finnegan and his fire. What are you boiling? What are you singing about? What an old dry bone. You can't make soup out of that. Any ghoul knows as well. Finnegan smiled. Well, then I must not be a ghoul, for I am making such a soup. The little werewolf crouched at Finnegan's side. I have never heard of bone soup before, but I think I'll like it. In some places I have traveled, bone soup is considered a delicacy, Finnegan explained. Besides, this is no ordinary bone. It is magic. He tasted the broth again and sighed. If only there were some stewed eyeballs. With eyeballs, the soup would be very tasty. The little werewolf tugged at Finnegan's cloak. The witch has jars of those. I know she does. All the villagers stared at the witch, and her face turned an even brighter shade of green. Well, y yes, I, I do, she stammered, but, but they're imported. The villagers stared at the witch until she finally fetched some from her stash. The eyeballs were a fabulous addition to the soup. But soon, Finnegan looked wistful. If only this had some bat wings, can you just imagine what flavor they would add? The little werewolf tugged at Finnegan again. The beast has cupboard cupboards full of those. I saw them myself. Embarrassed, the beast fetched an entire box of bat wings. The wings were added, and just as Finnegan had said, their flavor was wonderful. Finnegan continued to stir the soup, but he looked longingly into the cauldron. Now, if only we had frog legs, this soup would be fit for a king. The little werewolf tugged once more on Finnegan's cloak. The zombies have a cellar filled with those. Just ask them. Before Finnegan could ask, the zombie children had fetched all the frog legs they could carry. The frog legs were stirred into the broth. And soon, the cauldron was also bubbling with spider eggs, ugh, dried mouse droppings, mm, toenail clippings, ugh, and dandelions. Those aren't bad. With a final dusting of slime and sludge, the soup was declared ready. Of course, this soup is wonderful alone, said Finnegan, but it takes only wormy cheese, bread, and company to make it a true Halloween feast. Go, bring your cheese, bread, and bowls so we can share this bone soup together. What a fabulous soup. Such good flavor. Truly fit for a king. And to think it all was all made from a magic bone. And so it was that Finnegan got his Halloween feast after all. 
Bones. Oop. With a final wave to the werewolf, Finnegan quickly left with his eating stool, his eating spoon, and his gigantic smiling mouth. The end. That soup sounded disgusting. I don't think I'll be eating any bone soup, but if you'd like to, the recipe's right in here. You can check it out from our library where we have curbside service at the History Center. If you don't know where that is, ask your mom and your dad or whoever's taking care of you and they'll let you know. And we can, if you give us a call, we can hold some books for you. You can hold them yourself at the cranberrypubliclibrary.org and we will have them available for you during certain times during the week to pick it up. We would love to see you. So that's it for this week's Saturday story time. We're not going to have a recorded Saturday story time next week because we have got Saturday story time Halloween fun at Parsonage Barn next Saturday at 11 o'clock. Registration is full, so we've got everybody who's coming, but maybe if it's successful, we'll do a couple more outdoor story times. Who knows? It would be great. So anyway, I hope to see you guys soon. As always, be safe, be positive, and we'll see you soon at the Cranberry Public Library. Bye-bye.